see this new doctor, you see. And he said, do you know that two out of ten people are just like you? I said, are they? He said, oh, yes, there's a lot of it about. <laughs> I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, what the trouble is, you see, that you are under great strain due to your superior intelligence. I said, well, what do you do about it? He says, well, you see, we sort of clear your brain. So I said, oh, really? I'm all ears. Tell me more. He said, well, we put you to sleep for a whole week. I said, well, with dreams like I have, I'll be worn out. Apart <laughs> well, from which you can't afford to take the time off, can you? <laughs> well, that's what I told him. He says, what you'll have to do is have a cold shower every morning. You see. And then a run round the park. Well, I had my first run this morning. Oh. I put my little shorts on. I just got as far as the road mending gang when I was under strain again. She <laughs> faggy as peacock. If I catch anybody on this counter smoking after the bell has gone, I shall take very severe measures. <laughs> <laughs> You're for it. <laughs> I thought so. See me later, Mr. Lucas. Oh, he's in a foul mood, hasn't he? Oh, his whole world has fallen apart, you know. Don't tell me they've dropped him from the Grace Brothers table tennis team. <laughs> <laughs> he's been working on his chop all week. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worse than that. When he went to the flower stall this morning, they'd run out of carnations for his buttonhole. I saw the old thing. Oh, do tell. They offered him a dahlia instead. He hit the roof. What sort of fool do you think I'd look walking around with a dahlia in my buttonhole, he said. And a bird behind the counter said, the same sort of fool you look walking around with a carnation in your buttonhole. <laughs> so he cancelled his standard order and he sent Armand round the corner to the cosy posy shop for one. <laughs> Strums? I thought so. <laughs> You're late. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but you Don't see... Don't make I... your excuses to me. Explain yourself to Mrs Slocum. If she is not satisfied, she will take the matter up with me. Mrs. Slocum? Yes, Captain Peacock. Miss Brahms, as you can see, is late. I leave it to you to reprimand her. Very well, Captain Peacock. I, for my part, am reprimanding you for not telling me that she was late. But you knew she was late. That is not relevant. There is a correct procedure in store management that must be followed at all times. Pompous twit. <laughs> Miss Brahms, you are not to speak of your superiors in that manner. You've got that padded bra on again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've told you about that before. Oh, so what? It's very inflammatory for the men. <laughs> and, well, it's out of proportion with the rest of you. You look like the hunched front of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Satisfied? <laughs> I'm confiscating this until closing time. Where have you been? Well, I had to iron my nylon blouse this morning, you see, and I set the iron at number 10 and it went straight through. I had to stop off on the way to buy another one. Well, why couldn't you come here and get one? I'm not buying this rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brahms, I am responsible for the choice of merchandise in this store. It is top quality and I won't have it criticised by juniors. It comes from Hong Kong and you sew your own labels in. Look at that, £1.25. They're very hard-wearing. Hard-wearing? You'll be lucky if the elastic lasts till you get on the bus. <laughs> Miss Bronze, I will not have you knocking my knickers. And I'm not... <laughs> I'm not too keen on you nicking my knockers. <laughs> yes? How many frills has it got? I don't know. I haven't counted. Count them now. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Miss Brahms, how long have you worked at Grace Brothers? Four years. Well, that's quite long enough to have learned that juniors are not permitted more frills on their blouses than seniors. <laughs> <laughs> if six frills is enough for me, then two is more than enough for you. <laughs> yes, Mrs Slocum. Until I was 30, I wasn't allowed any frills at all. <laughs> I suppose after 30, it was too late. <laughs> There's the scissors. Cut four off. No. <laughs> right. I've had all the lip I'm taking. Captain Peacock will make you cut them off. <laughs> Captain Peacock. Mrs. Logan, go back to your counter and stand behind it. When I happen to look in your direction, raise your hand a little. If I nod, say, Captain Peacock, are you free? If I am, I will beckon and you may then approach me. That is the correct procedure. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Captain Peacock. 
<laughs> that was quick. Shut up. something to me, Mrs. Slocum? Yes, Captain Peacock. I'm going to see Mr. Rumbold, so get stuffed. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Slocum. Drop dead. <laughs> now, let's see if I've got this right. Uh, Miss Brown's made some disparaging remarks about Mrs. Slocum's underwear, complaining it was not hard-wearing. Uh, whereupon, Mrs. Slocum confiscated her knickers. No. <laughs> she confiscated my knockers. <laughs> knockers? Oh, I see, yes. The knickers were not hard-wearing. The door knockers were from hardware. <laughs> no, they were under my blouse. <laughs> you were wearing door knockers from hardware under your blouse. <laughs> you consider this to be inflammatory, Mrs. Slocum. Well, I consider that you were quite <laughs> Don't wear door knockers under your blouse anymore, Miss Brown. Uh, Mrs. Slocum then became agitated because up to the age of uh, 30, she hadn't had as many thrills as Miss Brown. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Frills on her blouse. Uh, yes. Frills on blouse which was being worn over the door knockers. Now it's all coming, <laughs> all coming clear to me. Uh, she then approached you, Captain Peacock, intending to suggest that you had them cut off. <laughs> I also have Get Stuffed written down here. Does that come in anywhere? I have a feeling it will very soon. <laughs> what is this? It's our, our Jumbo Juno range. <laughs> Miss Brown, I suggest you wear this instead of door knockers. <laughs> What's going on? They've been arguing in there for ten minutes. Yeah, well, perhaps Peacock will forget about me. Lucas? He hasn't forgotten about me. <laughs> I'm here, Mr. Lucas. You wish to see me about something or other, Captain Peacock? Yes, I do. What, no carnation this morning, Stephen? Go away. <laughs> Captain Peacock, if you speak to me like that in front of juniors, I shall complain to Mr. Rumbold. Do your waistcoat up properly and get back to your counter. Oh, damn! <laughs> You'll pay for that. It's me own. So tough cheese. <laughs> yes, well, if that's all, Captain Peacock, I'll go back to my counter. It is not all. On uh, Wednesday last, I twice reprimanded you for standing around with your hands in your pockets. On Friday, you had no handkerchief in your top pocket, and your hands in your trouser pockets again? Ah, yes, my hands were in my trouser pockets then, because they were looking for me handkerchief from my top pocket, you see. <laughs> on Monday last, I reprimanded you for having hairs on your collar. Uh, well, it started falling out, you see. On account of the worry because of the reprimand you'd given me on the Wednesday. Of the week. <laughs> I do not want to see fallen hairs on your collar again. No, sir. If I feel it falling, I'll jump out the way. <laughs> Unless you measure up to the standard required at Grace Brothers, we shall have to dispense with your services. Now get back behind your counter and send Mr. Humphreys over. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, he's had a go at Granger. He's practically given me the sack. Now it's your turn. He wouldn't dare. He wants you. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got any complaints, will you get them over quickly? I've been under a lot of strain lately. <laughs> Last Thursday... No, don't talk to me about Thursday. <laughs> I thought I'd never get through the day. To start with, I got my high heels caught in the escalator. <laughs> and I had six pairs of wife fronts returned with substandard openings. <laughs> <laughs> the coal man came round to my mother and said that he hadn't had what was due to him. Do you know, by 11 o'clock, my hand was shaking so much, it was more than my job was worth to take an inside leg. <laughs> well, let's take Friday. You were off the floor for 25 minutes in a couch. Oh, yes, it's that ledger clerk in sanctions. He will insist on telling me about Ramadan. 
<laughs> On Saturday, two customers complained that uh, they had difficulty in breathing because of your aftershave lotion. It's not aftershave, it's my new skin tightener. <laughs> it works wonders. You should see the commercial they do for it. It shows a prune being turned back into a plum. <laughs> it is my experience after 30 years in the distributive trade that customers place more trust in an honest prune than in someone desperately trying to look like Donny Osmond. Now get back there. Get back. <laughs> I've never been spoken to like that in the whole of my life. <coughs> I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> Friends, isn't it wrong for night to have... Here we are, Squire. One carnation for you to tart yourself up with. <laughs> they didn't have executive bread, so I had to settle for variegated. Oh. Well, that'll be all, Herman. Leave the floor. Yes, Your Highness. Shall I grovel <laughs> off? or back away respectfully. Just go. Yeah. Gather round, everybody. Not you. Oh, blimey. <laughs> now, listen very carefully to what I have to say. Ah, Peacock, I'm glad you've got everyone together. Now, listen very carefully to what I have to say. I've noticed a marked decline in the appearance and efficiency of the members of this department. But that's just what I was about to say, sir. What on earth is that? Are you referring to my carnation? Is that what you call it? How long have you been here, Peacock? Over 20 years, sir. Well, by now you should know perfectly well that floor walkers are permitted to wear only executive red carnations. Now, this is a typical example of the sort of slackness and hooliganism that I'm talking about. <laughs> we all know how to behave and dress. For 50 years, young Mr. Grace has shown us the way. He's appeared before us every day, polite, Smiling and elegantly attired as a gentleman should be. I've in fact. I've just stopped off from my trip to the USA. We'd never have guessed. <laughs> I brought back some great new ideas. You all's going right into orbit. I'll spill the load down to your bosses, and no doubt they'll fill you guys right in. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you, Mr. Grace. You've all done very swell. <laughs> Weapons roll! <laughs> Long, Captain Peacock. The last time I was late, a fireman had to climb out of my bedroom window and risk his life on a narrow ledge trying to grab hold of my pussy. They're very brave, these firemen. Poor animal was clutching the drain pipe with its eyes glued on the bus stop, watching for me. When she gets home, that Yuri Geller's on. <laughs> oh, I like him. I think he's ever so handsome. Well, he must have something. Do you know, the last time he was on, I was watching it and I was really concentrating. You know how you do. And I distinctly felt something move. <laughs> hey, so I plunged my hand in my trouser pocket and do you know my, <laughs> my door keys were bent double? <laughs> ah, very kind of you all to stay behind. Now, uh, settle down, everybody. You do. Well, I, I hope I shall get home in time to see the bionic woman. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that was your sort of programme, Mr Granger. <laughs> well, I want Mrs Granger to see it. You know, I'm trying to persuade her to buy a hearing aid. <laughs> She's never been quite right ever since she had that fall off a bus in Torquay. That must be quite a programme in itself. <laughs> I can see it all. She fell off a bus, but she can be mended. We have the means, we have the technology. She'll be faster, stronger, better, with new arms, new legs, new teeth, and new varicose veins. That is very unfeeling. Lucas, I absolutely forbid you to speak to your superiors like that. I'm sorry, Captain Peacock. I thought once the bell had gone, we were allowed to become human beings again. Well, this, uh, this does bring me to the first point. Uh, nay, to the very nub of our discussion here tonight. My word, we've never got to the nub as quick as that before. <laughs> <laughs> Young Mr Grace has been studying the sales techniques of stores such as ours in the USA, and he feels that we could benefit from some of their methods. Well, let me state categorically that if I'm to be expected to wear a, a Stetson hat and lasso the customers as they get out of the lift, <laughs> I am leaving here and now. 
I've heard they have a very interesting position at Austin Reed's. Mm, that rumor's been going around for some time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no intention of us yankifying ourselves. No, what we're striving for is the American informality. They are easygoing approach to customers and indeed to each other. Uh, for example, all the staff are on first name terms with the management. Is that a fact, Cuthbert? <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I would be annoyed if you were calling me Cuthbert, uh, Stephen, uh, but of course, you're quite right to do so. And uh, Mr. Lucas's badinage with uh, Ernest uh, sets exactly the right tone of friendly interstaff relations which young Mr. Grace is trying to achieve. Well, what about his first name? Yes, uh, Mr. Lucas, what is your first name? Just call me Mr. Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, no, no, we can't have that. Come along, let's have it. Dick. <laughs> Good. Gets more informal every minute. <laughs> well, now, I have a list of points here from young Mr. Gray, so let's go through them one by one. Hmm? First, dress. Uh, we must henceforth dispense with the formality of our dress. All this rubbish about two inches of white handkerchief in the top pocket and... Uh... Carnations. Carnations and... Uh... Frills on blouses. Exactly. It's all out of date. <laughs> all out of date. Dress to express your personalities. Don't look like salesmen. They look, look like people. Uh, second, uh, the approach to the customer. Don't strut up to the customer and say, are you being served? No, no. Make contact with them. Say, hello there. My name's Stephen. And this is, uh, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Dick, and he'll see if he's got something your size. <laughs> Thirdly, atmosphere. Atmosphere. It, we must get rid of this museum-like hush. We must have background music. Oh, I shall look forward to that. Betty here, leaning over the counter, chewing gum, singing, Hey, big spender, spend a little time on me. <laughs> Watch it, Mr Lucas. Dick. <laughs> Thank you, Claiborne. <laughs> now, lastly, I have noticed a little tension between various members of the staff. Now, this can communicate itself to customers. And Mr. Grace has ordered that we should start each day, as we mean to go on, by declaring our friendship for each other. Friendship? Hmm. Yes. yes, we shall start each day by gripping our fellow workers by the hand, looking into their eyes and saying, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it now. I'll set an example. <laughs> I like you, Stephen. <laughs> and I like you too, Cuthbert. <laughs> From now on, we're going to be great friends. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Good, good. I can feel the tears of joy welling up inside. <laughs> now, uh, Betty and uh, Shirley, let's see if there's no ill will between you. Uh, grip her hand, Betty. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> now say, I like you, Shirley. I like you, Shirley. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, Claiborne... Hang and... on a minute. I'm not having this. She hadn't said she liked me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance, did I? Old Juggy has jumped straight. Old <laughs> <laughs> oh, Juggy has, yes. I, I like that. <laughs> oh, well, Shirley, you off you go, then. No, oh, it's too late now. The moment's passed. <laughs> well, never mind. Let's all do it together. Ready, steady, go. Oh, I, I like you. I like you, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, excellent marvellous. Now, I think this, this overtime has been very well spent. I have a question, Cuthbert. Yes, Stephen. May we go home? <laughs> what a shame. We were just becoming good friends. <laughs> now, remember, when you come in on Monday morning, it's informal attire, we're all on first-name terms, and friendship and banter are the order of the day. <laughs> well, good night, Ernest. Good night, Claiborne. Sweet dreams, Cuff. <laughs> <laughs> good night, uh, Dick. 
See you around, Baldy. <laughs> Good night, Shirley and Betty. Here, we don't have to kiss you, do we? <laughs> oh, thank heaven for that. Good night, Stephen. Good night, Cuthbert. Um, what do you think? I was dubious at first, but uh, I can see the advantage of being able to speak one's mind and uh, get things off one's chest without fear of uh, upsetting anybody. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that, Stephen, because there's something I've been wanting to say to you all day. Oh, really, Cuthbert, what's that? Get stuffed. <laughs> Bowling. Hello. How's it going, Harry? <laughs> Mr. Armand, do you? <laughs> In accordance with the new policy of the store, we are all on first name terms now. Not me. Not until my convener has ratified the agreement with the properly constituted committee. Until then, it's Mr. Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How's it going, Mr. Harmon? Not bad, Cuthbert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were supposed to wear casual things. Oh, that is for the members of the department to meet the public. It doesn't apply to executive staff. <laughs> <laughs> Mick Chagger and Twiggy's mum. <laughs> Morning, uh, Shirley and uh, Dick. <laughs> I must say, I think you both made a marvellous effort. Where's the sign and in book, man? <laughs> We've dispensed with all that sort of red tape. Just stand there. Now, I press this button. <laughs> See, that's taken a picture of you and the clock. Well, that's done away with the red tape, hasn't it? Where's Peacock? I mean, sorry, Stephen. Well, contrary to instructions, he arrived formally dressed as usual. So I've sent him off to our way out boutique to be made to look a little more trendy. Yeah, I never knew you had dairy chest. Yeah, I've had it for years. Why don't you try it? <laughs> Good morning, Ernest. It isn't good at all. <laughs> Mrs. Granger doesn't believe I've gone to work. <laughs> she thinks that I've pulled somebody in the mixed bowls tea. <laughs> morning, Betty. Good morning, Dick. <laughs> Let's see what you've got under the coat, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, come now, you can do better than that. Mr. Rumble. I have worked in stores for nigh on more years than I care to remember. And I have always dressed to suit the dignified side of my personality. But, Mrs. Slocum, it's the warm, uninhibited side of your personality that we're hoping to see. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the front, but it's very uninhibited at the back. <laughs> you asked for it and you got it. And a double helping too, if I may say so. <laughs> You'll get a fat lip. <laughs> Cuthbert, Ernest, Shirley, Dick. <laughs> And if I'm not mistaken, Mae West. <laughs> Magnificent. You shouldn't have taken all that trouble. What are you talking about? I haven't been home since last night. <laughs> Where's Stephen? Oh, he's, uh, he's being modernised in the Way Out Boutique. Get me Austin Reeves. <laughs> been a very good week, Mr. Gress. Yes, and may I say how glad we are that you've returned safely from your trip to the East? We've got all the ideas running, everything's running very smoothly. Peace, man. Love. <laughs> that 
might as well. Do you have trousers? As far as the eye can see. Then pant me, man. Claiborne? You call Stevie Baby? Strides for the Omi with a naff riot. Wish me luck, Dick. Hit him with a tank, Clay. <laughs> I haven't understood a single word for seven days. <laughs> Stay with it, Ernest, or it could be goodbyesville. <laughs> Are you serving? Are you buying? <laughs> of course I'm buying. Then I'm serving. <laughs> I'm looking for a pair of tan pantyhose. My name's Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a pair of tan pantyhose. Call me Betty. <laughs> I'm looking for a pair of tan pantyhose, Betty. What's your name? <laughs> Cynthia Randall. Oh, Cynthia. What a beautiful name. Oh, when it does suit you. I like you, Cynthia. I really do like you, Cynthia. <laughs> 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 you gonna bark at the merchandise? <laughs> oh. I've been trying for all week and I still can't get it right. Never mind, let it all hang out. <laughs> Don't you mean hang in? Not from where I'm standing, Betty Baby. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. This display unit was supposed to be ready a week ago. All the other floors have got theirs. I'm afraid we've had certain teething problems. The teeth kept falling out. <laughs> Come on, uh, gather round, everybody. The display unit has arrived. <laughs> now, this will stand outside your lift. And every time the doors open, it will raise its hat and say, Welcome to my store, welcome to my store. Oh, it's so lifelike, it gives me the shivers. Shall I activate it? Uh, yes, Mr. Hum. Welcome to my store. <laughs> welcome to my store. Welcome to my store. Oh, switch it off, Mr. Harmon. Welcome Harman. to my store. I thought it was uh, supposed to raise its hat. Y y yes, what's wrong with it, Harmon? Well, I told you we've been having troubles with it. Hang on. Shall we give it one more try? Yes, yes. Right. Welcome to my store. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Have we got to put up with? Uh, little Mr. Grace, positions everybody. Hi, <laughs> 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 Daddy. <laughs> Welcome back from Peking, sir. I hope your trip was a success. Oh yes, a very great success. Yes, I, I've given up the idea of this American approach, and but I've got some great new, new ideas now. You'll find them all in my little red book. Thank you, Mr. Grace. You've all done the very welly. 